This video is gonna focus upon metallic bonding, giant metallic structures, and explanations of the physical properties of giant metallic structures in terms of their structure and bonding considerations. So consider sodium metal as a good example. Each atom of sodium within the metallic structure, of which there will be a great many throughout the total structure, will have a relatively weak attraction between its positive nucleus and its outermost electron. This is actually an inherent characteristic of all metal atoms which have relatively small nuclei when compared to their atomic radius or their atomic size, and also when compared to the amount of filled electron shells they possess, which are shielding their outermost electrons, or electron in the case of sodium, from the attraction of the positive nucleus. In effect, each atom within our sodium structure will have lost control of its outermost electron. It will be able to move its outermost electron from its outermost shell to the outermost shell of a neighbouring atom. We say that this electron has become delocalized, leaving the sodium atom effectively as if it were a sodium 1 plus cation as a result. This will mean that throughout the, the, the sodium metal structure there will be many sodium positive cations being attracted towards these negatively charged delocalized electrons that are surrounding them or between these cations. So here is my image of a sodium atom with its outermost electron, and that outermost electron can be delocalized from this sodium atom's outer shell and move into the outer shell of a neighboring sodium atom, which would be located over here somewhere. And this is my image of two sodium cations being attracted towards that negatively charged delocalized electron between them, and that's the key aspect of a metallic bond. As a definition, we say that metallic bonding is a strong electrostatic force of attraction between positive metal cations and negatively charged surrounding delocalized electrons. And these extend throughout the metallic structure. So we should really expand on to what a metallic structure is like. So metallic structures are another class of giant structure. What's a giant structure, you may ask? A giant structure is in chemistry, a regular repeating 3D pattern known as a lattice. It's a very regular structure. Metals in particular possess layers of positive metal cations surrounded by a sea of negatively charged delocalized electrons. And there are strong metallic bonds between the positive metal cations and delocalized electrons throughout the entire lattice structure. So it creates an incredibly strong structure as a result. Each of these positive cations is being pulled towards the negative electrons between them, and this inward attractive force is holding the entire metallic structure together. So what sort of properties do we expect metals to have? Well, one of the key properties is they have high melting points. We can consider why that would be the case. So why do metals have high melting points? It would be because of all those strong metallic bonds. There are many strong metallic bonds throughout that giant lattice. Those many metallic bonds will require large, large amounts of heat energy to be broken and overcome. We could take a specific case study, which will help to understand why different metals have different melting points. So it turns out that magnesium has a higher melting point than sodium. There must be a reason behind this. But if we consider the differences, that will explain the differences in the metallic bonding. Magnesium, being a group two metal, is able to delocalize two outermost electrons, sometimes known as valence electrons, per atom, compared to sodium only being able to delocalize one electron per atom. This means that once that's occurred, magnesium cations will have a two plus charge, whereas sodium cations will only have a one plus charge. Therefore, there will be stronger metallic bonds or stronger electrostatic attractions between the two plus magnesium cations, which have delocalized a greater number of electrons per cation compared to sodium, which has only delocalized one and formed a one plus ionic charge. So the stronger the metallic bonding is usually linked to the idea of having stronger cations, a higher magnitude charge cations with a greater number of delocalized electrons per cation being released. Other properties of metallic structures include that they are good conductors, even when they are solid. And the reason behind that is linked very closely to the fact they have delocalized electrons. So that word delocalized 
implies that they are moving from cation to cation along the structure. They are therefore free to move or flow throughout the metallic structure. And from physics 101, we know that the flow of electrons is what is known as an electrical current. And if they're all flowing in the same direction, we have our, our wire conducting a current, for example. So metals can conduct electricity because they have delocalized electrons, which are free to move or flow throughout the metal structure. Really important to emphasize that it's the, the movement of the delocalized electrons, which is creating the electrical current. Another key property of metals is that they are very good conductors of heat energy. And again, I want to em emphasize why this would be the case. So consider a metallic structure. It's got compact metal cations arranged in layers. So when you heat one end of a piece of metal, the metal atoms or metal cations at that end of the piece of metal begin to vibrate when they absorb that heat energy in their fixed positions. As they vibrate, they will touch surrounding metal cations and pass on, or at least get you know, even very close, or actually touch no, surrounding metal cations and pass on that heat energy via conduction along the layers of metal cations. Additionally, the movement of the localized electrons may also help to transfer some thermal energy through the metal structure as they move. So not only are they acting as an electrical current, but also they might be taking a small amount of thermal energy along with them for the ride and helping to conduct thermal energy throughout the metal structure. The final property of metals I want to focus on is that they are described as malleable and ductile. So what do we mean by malleable and ductile? Well, malleable means that they can be molded and can be bent into specific shapes without uh, breaking, without snapping. And ductile means you can stretch metals into wires. Totally essential for our modern applications uh, in terms of the industrial world around us. And obviously uh, for th things like jewelry, rings, for example, malleability is essential. And again, it's all down to the structure as to the reason behind this property. We have these layers of metal cations. Now these layers of metal cations are able to slide over each other smoothly without breaking the strong electrostatic forces of attraction between the positive metal cations and the surrounding delocalized electrons. Now if the metallic bonds remain unbroken, then that layer of metal cations will not shear away or snap away. Instead, it will hold in that new configuration and the bend will not cause a snapping unless you, the only way you can really break metals uh, is to continually wear them away at, the sing at a single point, creating dislocations in the giant metallic structure, which will then lead to a, an eventual shearing as the metal weakens. But metals are described as malleable and ductile because layers of metal cations can slide over each other without breaking or overcoming the strong metallic bonds between them. That concludes the key physical properties of metallic structures.